Welcome back to another episode of NWA Power in this WWE 2K22 Universe mode and we are just a couple of weeks away from NWA All Out War and that man currently holds the men's Crockett Cup cash in case and a lot of drama about uh, the recent cash ins but we're gonna get to those for now Volta and Imperium. Imperium were unfortunately subject to the shortest or quickest, quickest loss in Universe Mode history when 2.0 defeated them on NWA USA. They are back with a vengeance and uh, Volta has straight up challenged Chris Jericho to a match. Chris Jericho, of course, going to be taking on Will Ospreay at NWA All Out War. It's going to be a champion versus champion winner takes all match. Former champion Volta going to be taking on the GOAT, the Lionheart, Chris Jericho with his Appreciation Society, Matt Menard and Angelo Parker. He captured that national championship after hiring Omos to take out Austin Theory. Austin Theory currently out of action due to an injury at the hands of Omos. Chris Jericho using this as an opportunity to get himself a foothold in the NWA roster. Right off the bat, this crowd fully behind Volta and Chris Jericho. Right off the bat with the chops, that quick assault on Volta. You know damn well Chris Jericho's been uh, training for this one in particular. Going to be watching a lot of previous Volta matches. He's got the majority of the offense in so far. Went for the clothesline. Jericho dodged out the way, trying to use his speed, which Jericho doesn't usually get the opportunity to do. But against somebody like Volta, he's able to uh, give that a go. Later on tonight, we've got some developments when it comes to the women's division after that shock win on NWA USA where Charlotte Flair cashed in using a different briefcase. Some are calling it the NWA Flair Bel Air Screwjob. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, but officially Charlotte Flair is currently the NWA Women's Champion. Big developments for All Out War. It's going to be very interesting to see what ends up going down. Irish Whip into the corner and a big boot to the face of Jericho. And Volta just moving out the way, that springboard back elbow. Attempt by Jericho. Oh my god, and the headlock toss. Oh my grief, the ring general just throwing around Chris Jericho now. Kick to the midsection attempt, but Jericho dodging out of the way, looking for a power bomb on Volta. Oh, oh, he almost dropped him, but he managed to get him. Hooking both legs there and a quick kick out from Volta. He almost ended up dropping Volta, which... Oh my god, he caught him in the code breaker. Volta's down. Went for the walls, but Volta's straight back up. <laughs> Volta said no way. Uh-oh, uh-oh, went for a kick, but Jericho caught him. Spun around into the, into the takedown. Almost a German suplex, but Volta didn't go all the way over. Oh, and an overhead chop. Oh, and there's another... There's the German suplex that Volta was looking for. Now lifting him to his feet. Irish whip into the corner. Jericho stopped though for a moment. 2.0 there at ringside as well. Oh, and a single leg takedown there by Volta. Who, after that initial burst... Burst? That, <laughs> that initial burst of energy from Jericho at the start of the match... Has slowly been worn down and slowed down. And now Volta did have the offense. I spoke a little bit too soon because Jericho is back on top. Sunset flip. Didn't keep him there for the pin, but 
Oh my god, and a springboard crossbody. Very nice there. Getting all that body weight on top of Volta while he's grounded and now smashing the head against the mat. Going for a pinfall, but a quick kick out from Volta. Volta's got to try and get to his feet. Volta's win loss ratio when it comes to being in the NWA has been pretty decent so far. He's definitely going to be building his way towards a championship opportunity of some kind. But we don't know which championship it'll be. But with the return of Imperium, Imperium have inserted themselves into the current faction wars taking place on the roster. Oh my god. Completely crushing Jericho. And there's a knee drop. What in the world is Volta going for? Looks like maybe a powerbomb, but no! Jericho with the back body drop! Mustering all that strength to launch Volta over his head. Holy shit! Oh, and a, and a slap! A slap from Jericho. And Volta's not looking happy. Went for the big boot, got caught with the Enziguri. Jericho baited him. And now Jericho trying to take advantage of the grounded ring general. Could be looking for the lion salt, but no, no, going for the walls. Going for the lion tamer. Lion tamer on Volta. Lion tamer on Volta. Volta's struggling. He wriggles through. Look at the strength of Volta. Holy shit. Whoa, what in the world just happened? Holy shit. I don't even know what to call that. Oh, and Volta just did the same thing. <laughs> Holy shit. And now Volta with Jericho up into the powerbomb. And look at Jericho. Jericho looks like he could be out on his feet right now. He bounced back up to his feet. Holy shit. And again... Look at Volta. Look at Volta. Oh my god. And a second power bomb lights out for Chris Jericho. And Jericho slipping the shoulder up off of the mat. Jericho cannot be silenced right now. He's got a lot to prove. If he if he loses now on the road to all out war, it could mean a lot of humiliation for him. What a boost of morale for Will Ospreay that would be. And look at this burst of adrenaline from Chris Jericho. Where is he going? Oh my god, and a moonsault off the top. Whoa, went for the Judas effect. Went for a double axe handle. Both men dodging out of the way. Oh my god, and a lariat to the spine of Jericho. Holy shit. Oh, into a snap German suplex. The lariat to the back. Uh-oh. And now the sleeper hold. The sleeper hold on Jericho. Jericho got the ropes. Jericho managing to get the ropes there. And Volta looks pissed. Volta looks angry. Bringing Jericho into the center of the ring. Where is Volta going? Volta's going to the top turnbuckle. That's where he's going. Oh my god, and a diving senton off the top. One, two. Oh, and Jericho with a kick out. Oh my god, and Chris Jericho with the submission on Volta. Volta having to tap out there. I don't, I don't know what Jericho was raking at. He was raking at something while the referee weren't looking. And he's managed to steal a win from Volta. So after that upset for Volta losing to uh, Chris Jericho there, we've got TMDK, the mighty don't kneel. Kicking it off with Buddy Murphy. I don't really know if he considers himself as the leader of the faction, but ever since his feud with Pete Dunne, Murphy's had a bit of a, a bit of a rough time on the NWA. 
Um, he's just been stuck in the middle. But he's found himself wrapped up in these faction wars. And of course his teammates, the tag duo of TMDK. Former tag champion, former intercontinental champion Shane Haste and his partner Jonah, who recently had a match against a returning Pete Dunne on NWA USA. So yep, we've got trios action and TMDK are going to be taking on the trio team of Legado del Fantasma with a leader of Legado del Fantasma, Santos Escobar leading out the team there. Leading out the team because he's the leader. But heading out first, being flanked by Mendoza and uh, Wild. Legado del Fantasma's had a little bit of a rough patch when it comes to getting wins. This is going to be an elimination match. And Santos Escobar luring Shane Haste outside of the ring there, breaking this up into three singles matches. Jonah and, uh, and Wild, Mendoza and Murphy. And then Haste and Escobar. But we have seen Escobar mix it up in the Super Junior Division. And we've seen TMDK mix it up in the Tag Division. We're seeing those two divisions kind of merge now. And who knows, one of these teams could face FTR at All Out War. We're going to be finding out who's going to be the tag contenders fairly soon. We're going to need to find some. And with new tag teams like 2.0 and the club coming into the mix, it's definitely shaking things up. And Hayes just caught the foot of Escobar, slowing him down in his tracks while Murphy is... Uh, <laughs> giving Mendoza a hard time. Look at that fireman's carry roundhouse kick there by Haste to Escobar. Very nice. Again, this is elimination, so whichever team gets a pinfall first will have the clear advantage. But that doesn't mean they've secured themselves the win. An advantage is all it is. Look at Haste hammering on the face of Escobar. Mendoza going up top with a grounded Murphy. And a big splash lands on Murphy while on the outside, Haste teetering with Escobar. Oh, and a drop kick to the spine. Escobar now going into the ring to help out Mendoza with Murphy. Haste looking to follow. Package driver. Oh my god, and a springboard kick. Straight to the chin of Escobar. What a move there. Oh, and a knee deflecting away Escobar. Mendoza's going for the pin on Murphy. Oh, and he almost got it. Oh my god, and Mendoza's gone. Mendoza is out of this match. Murphy just pinned him. I don't even know how he managed to. We didn't have a camera on him, but he's gone. And just like that, Legado del Fantasma are a man down. Look at this mugging in the middle of the ring. Haste and Murphy going after Escobar. And Wild now getting back into the ring and quickly exiting out, realising that uh, maybe not. No, he's come to the rescue of his leader. Code Red! Escobar's been busted open. DDT to Murphy! Look at Wild trying it. Even the odds here going after Jonah. Oh my god. And giving Escobar some time to breathe. Tilt the world into the arm breaker. Uh, into the arm breaker. Into the arm drag. Rolling thunder code breaker. Look at this. Oh my god. And stopped in his tracks. By Jonah. And Escobar's now in the ring. Inverted Rana to, to Jonah. Oh my god, and a bicycle knee! Drop kick from Escobar! It's all popping off! <laughs> it's all popping off! And Wild's been forced to the outside. Oh my god, and a springboard drop kick to the outside! Oh, and a drop kick on the inside! Escobar's going wild! 
Oh, and on the mean, on the meantime, in the meantime, Wild's getting pinned. Dude, Buster, center of the ring. One, two. Oh my God! And Wild just tapped out on the outside, but it doesn't count. It wasn't a legal tap because it's on the exterior of the ring. Oh, Samoan Driver! Samoan Driver! One, two. Oh my god, and Escobar trying his hardest to put away Jonah while the mugging on the outside of the ring, the brutal assault on Wild. And Jonah, oh, with a wasteland, followed by the centaur. And Jonah's now setting up for something in the corner. Looking for a spear. Oh my god, and Escobar dodged out the way. Caught him in the victory roll. One, two. Oh my god. Oh my god, and Wild just getting thrown around the outside of the ring. Super kick to Escobar. There's the black swan off the top. Oh, and Escobar's gone. And it is all down to Wild. It is a three-on-one match now. With TMDK sending a message to Legado del Fantasma. They want the tag belts. They want to face FTR. Oh my god. And Haste going for the pin. Trying to put away Wild. Wild again, kicking out. Uh oh. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh my god. This is insane. And a third down under DDT. How? How is Wacking Wild kicking out? <laughs> what is going on? Oh ho ho ho! Frog splash! Off the top! Oh, big splash from Jonah! And now, Death Valley bomb! Or Bomb Valley Death, whatever! One, two, and that is it! TMDK win! With Indy Hartwell in the ring, we're gonna be seeing the new NWA Women's Champion in action here tonight. And we've been told Charlotte Flair's got a surprise and there it is. The new NWA Women's Championship, a new and updated version. Brought in by Charlotte Flair. So it's been confirmed that the referee was in fact paid off. It was a screw job. She brought out the briefcase and <laughs> essentially the referee allowed the contract again. A redo of the contract. It is what it is, I guess. There was no stopping it. She's just the first person to be smart enough to do it. <laughs> so here we go. Charlotte Flair going to be taking on Indy Hartwell and it's being confirmed that Flair will be punished for her actions on NWA USA after stealing the championship, essentially, and uh, <laughs> using the referee to her advantage. Uh, and that's because at All Out War, there's going to be an elimination chamber. And we're going to be finding out who exactly is going to be in that chamber later on tonight, as well as in the upcoming uh, couple of weeks prior to All Out War. There's going to be qualifying matches to determine all five women, with one of them taking place after this. And some women you will see multiple times, because we're starting off with a battle royal. And a lot of those women will compete in singles matches following that battle royal. But yeah, that's going to be Charlotte Flair's initial defense. Will have to be a elimination chamber. It'll be the first ever NWA women's chamber. Which uh, will definitely be making some history. Charlotte Flair going after the legs of Hartwell. 
Those long ass legs. If anybody's gonna uh, compete with Charlotte Flair for the longest legs on the roster, it'd be Hartwell. I'm sure Hartwell's got one hell of a big boot behind those thighs. Just like Charlotte Flair's signature big boot. We've got a lot of tall and muscular women on the NWA women's roster. Just like Rhea Ripley, who was one of the most dominating champions that we've had, period. You've got former MMA star Ronda Rousey. Like, this women's division is stacked right now. We've got so many superstars, not to mention the EST, the best athlete in all of the NWA, Bianca Belair. All of these women pack a punch. Could Indy Hartwell find her way into the Elimination Chamber? This is uh, making her debut. We've never seen Indy Hartwell before. Not in Universe mode. And it's been confirmed that later on tonight, Karrion Cross, the NWA USA Champion, will be hosting an open challenge to put his championship on the line. He's uh, been speaking to William Regal, and both him and William Regal have agreed that nobody has really stepped up to the plate when it comes to picking up enough wins. A lot of a lot of the matches lately have been very back and forth. A lot of wins and losses between people. So he's going to be hosting an open challenge. I'm sure somebody from one of the factions will step up, since factions are trying to get as much gold as possible. Oh my god, an Indy Hartwell sent straight back out of the ring. The humiliation there by Flair. Went for the chop and Hartwell with a reversal getting in the power slam position, but going for the chop block, attacking those legs. Going to be making sure that she cannot hit any big boots. Oh my god, look at this combination. Oh, went for the big boot. Flair went for it, kicked to the midsection. Look at this. DDT, Hammerlock DDT to Flair. And a kick out from the champion. Indy Hartwell setting up for something, went for a drop kick. Springboard drop kick attack. Oh my god. Oh, and there's a drop kick of uh, Flair's. Flair with a quick stomp to the midsection, now dragging Hartwell into the middle of the ring. <laughs> I've been weirdly talking about legs for this match, and it's quite fitting since it sets up that signature submission maneuver by Flair. The figure eight. Trying to make Hartwell tap. And she does. The champion picks up a win. Flair with a win moving up to the pay-per-view pretty soon. She's now going to observe who she will face in the Elimination Chamber. So here we go. Time for the Battle Royal. One of these women is going to get an opportunity to qualify for the Chamber without having to go through a singles match qualifier. That's what it, that's what the, the situation is here. It's kind of like an early in situation. Oh, and well, Bianca, Be uh, Bianca Bella, Blair Davenport is an early out. <laughs> She's just been thrown over the top rope. Holy shit. By uh, Lacey Evans. Lacey Evans, who we've not seen in quite some time. Whoa! And Tony Storm definitely in her wheelhouse here because she was the winner of the first Power Rumble. I'm gonna keep bringing it up because it was impressive as hell. So Tony Storm possibly has the advantage here. She's been in this situation before. Look at the caliber of talent in this ring. And yes, Bianca Belair will have a singles rematch opportunity against the champion at some point in the future, but she's not using it for the chamber. She said she doesn't want to waste her one-on-one -on -one shot, 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 her, her shot at the elimination chamber. So, she wants to qualify like everyone else. 
Oh, and a clothesline from Tony Storm takes down Ripley as Dewdrop and Bel Air tackle it out again. That was the match on NWA USA. Look at Ripley trying to get Tony Storm out of here. Oh my god, the back suplex into the face buster. Power slam by Dewdrop to Bel Air. Oh, big boot to the back of Dewdrop. Good grief, and there's Liv Morgan with Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey had a very impressive win-loss ratio so far since making her debut on the roster. Tony Storm going after Liv Morgan. We've seen this feud going on for quite some time, and Liv Morgan with two feet to the face of Storm. And now catching Morgan into the, the spinning brain buster. Look at Ripley. Ripley teetering by the corner. Oh my god, and a big boot by Storm and Ripley goes over. Ronda Rousey straight underneath Tony there, trying to take her down and she does target in the arm. Look at that. The head scissors there from Liv Morgan. Catching Lacey Evans and Dewdrop again going after Bianca Belair. Those two had a very impressive match on USA. And Tony Storm survives, staying in this thing, after being attacked by Rousey. Look at Bianca Belair with Dewdrop in the corner, trying to eliminate her over that top turnbuckle. As this breaks down into three singles matches spread across the ring. Oh, Rousey went for a, went for a combination of attacks there. Whoa! And Tony Storm dodging out of the way. Kick to the midsection of Rousey. Powerbomb position, but look at Rousey fighting back with those punches. Oh my god, and Tony Storm's gonna fight back with her punches of her own. Lacey Evans with the alley oop to Liv Morgan. Whoa, 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 rolling through. Sunset flip, but there's no pinfalls. Holy shit. Look at Dewdrop trying to get Bel Air out of the ring. What an elimination that would be for Dewdrop. And again, we're going to be seeing some of these women again in singles qualifiers over the next two weeks. Look at the combination of punches from Rousey to Storm. Oh, and a punch back. Trying to stay in this thing. Oh, went for the big boot. Rousey dodged out the way. Caught her in the German suplex. German to Bel Air from Dewdrop. And Lacey Evans managing to stay in this match a lot longer than I think a lot of people were expecting. Oh, and Piper goes over. Dewdrop's teetering. Dewdrop is teetering. Rousey was looking to take advantage there, trying to drop in, tr trying to drop in, trying to drop, do drop. Oh, and the attack with her hair, Storm dodged out the way and she hit Evans with it. Oh my god. Sending Bel Air over the top rope, but Bel Air stays in this thing. Look at Storm now targeting Evans. Evans goes over the top turnbuckle, uh, top turnbuckle, top rope. Oh my god, and a quick jab there from Bel Air. Oh, and a big boot. Oh, and Evans is gone. Evans is eliminated by Storm. Look at Storm with a big boot. And Tony Storm's just sent Bianca Bel Air into Dewdrop. Oh, she got caught off there trying to hit her with the Irish whip. And Bel Air, a dewdrop teaming up on Tony Storm for a second there while Liv Morgan goes toe to toe with Rousey. Bianca Bel Air looking to eliminate Storm. Oh, and she does. Storm's gone. Rousey's gone. It's down to Bel Air, Dewdrop, and Liv Morgan. One of these women's going to get a free ticket to the Elimination Chamber. Taking Liv Morgan over to the ropes. 
trying to eliminate her. Oh my god, and the brutal slap there from Liv Morgan in return. That's what Bianca Belair gets, I guess. And now, Liv Morgan trying to eliminate Belair. Oh my god, and she does. Holy shit, and Dewdrop is showing Morgan already that <laughs> she does not have the strength advantage over her. <laughs> oh, body splash in the corner. Dewdrop looking to make light work of Liv Morgan right now. Taking her over to the ropes. Body slam position. There, it, there we go. <laughs> there we go. I was going to say, there it goes. <laughs> Dewdrop is going to the Elimination Chamber. What a big win for Piper Niven. And now for that NWA USA Open Challenge, we're going to find out who's answering the call to face Karrion Cross in tonight's main event. And it's the Bruiserweight with... Will Ospreay. Pete Dunn, who made his return on the last episode of NWA USA. Is it possible that he's joined the Empire? We never know what Will Ospreay's got up his sleeve, but this is something entirely different. He betrayed and turned... Mustache Mountain against Pete Dunne. He broke up British Strong Style. So it's going to be Pete Dunne with the NWA champion at ringside, Will Ospreay. No other members of the Empire though. And he's going to be taking on Karrion Cross for the NWA USA Championship. This is... One hell of a massive match. Pete Dunne's a former Universal Champion. He's the longest reigning world champion that we've ever had in Universe Mode. Karrion Cross, more of a recent addition to Universe Mode, has been insanely dominant. But is he going to be enough to take down Pete Dunne? We know how brutal Pete Dunne can get. Will Ospreay manage to stand up to him? Will Karrion Cross be able to? Accompanied there by Scarlet Bordeaux. Again, Nova members of the United Empire. This is an interesting setup. Every time we've seen somebody that is a member of the Empire, they are flanked by at least three members. Is it possible Pete Dunne has been hired by the Empire? Is he an official member? I don't know, but Karrion Cross has been on a path of destruction. And Pete Dunne could be the next man on his defeat list. So here we go, Pete Dunne, Karrion Cross, And right off the bat, Dunne's going for the hand. Going for the hand of the Hitman. And a brutal offense right off the bat. But Karen Cross using his strength to overpower Pete Dunne. Lariat in the corner. Look at the height advantage that Cross has over Dunne. That's insane. The height and the size. It's incredible. Quick jab to the midsection there. Pete Dunne managing to create a little bit of space between the two of them. Punch to the midsection, takes down Cross to his knees, now raking at the face, just like Jericho did earlier during that submission hold. Stomp to the back of the neck. Let's not forget that Volta, who we saw in the opening match, again, cash in case, we could see him at All Out War. Cashing in against whoever wins that match between Osprey and Jericho. Maybe he's going to get some revenge on Chris Jericho by cashing in. Maybe he wants to become top dog by beating Osprey. Alabama slam but rolls through into the sunset flip. Quick kick out by Cross. Pete Dunne using that speed, using his 
smaller stature to wriggle free and to dodge out of the way. Oh, and a big lariat. Let's not make no mistake about it. Pete Dunne's got the strength behind him, though. He usually targets the limbs of his opponents. Wears them down. And this match is spilled to the outside now. Chop block from Dunn. To carry and cross. The crowd firmly behind the concept of Pete Dunn being the one to take the belt off of cross. And Pete Dunn. Owning the ring right now, count of five, giving himself an opportunity to get into this. And now, with the taunt from Cross, Pete Dunn goes after him, but he gets baited in. Oh, managing to wriggle his uh, center of gravity around. <laughs> Don't even know if that's possible, but it looks like that's what he did. Good grief, and now the brawl is going up the ramp. Oh, knee to the mid. Fourth, kick to the gut, Pete Dunn, X-Plex on the concrete, X-Plex on the concrete, he's got to break up the pin, uh, he's got to break up the count, not the pin, <laughs> don't break up the pin, that X-Plex on the outside should have been enough to keep Cross down, but Cross is a beast of a man, look at the offense straight on Pete Dunn, he's all over him, Look at these attacks. This is insane. And Dunn trying to get back into it. Forearm strike. Look at Osprey observing at ringside. He wants that NWA USA Championship. And Dunn trying to get back into it. Forearm strike. Look at Osprey observing at ringside. He wants that NWA USA Championship. Oh, look at this assault! Like a Gatling gun firing out rounds. Oh my god, and he wears down the champion. What a combination there. Oh, went for the Enziguri, but Cross dodged out the way. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Where's that chair come from? Oh, but Pete Dunn took advantage of the chair. I think Bordeaux. I think Bordeaux threw the chair into the ring. Bitter end. And now going for the pinfall on Cross. One. Two. Oh my god, and Cross with a kick out. And look at Cross setting up. Pete Dunn looking for the cross jacket submission. And Pete Dunn. Oh my god, with a with an elbow strike there, managing to fight him off. Look at this back and forth. Oh my god, exploding suplex. And now we've done grounded the repeated forearm strikes to the face of the bruiser weight. Dunn's got to get out of there. It's like getting mauled by a, by like a grizzly bear. Cross is just throwing him around, beating the life out of him. And Dunn, seeing his opportunity, kick to the midsection, looking for another X-Plex. Oh, and he hits it. X-Plex on Cross. And look at Bordeaux. Bordeaux getting involved, interfering. Cross is out on his feet right now. Oh my god, and Pete Dunn turned around and Cross is back. Whoa, Pete Dunn rolled out of it. Rolled out of it, went for the forearm strike. But Cross deflected, catching him. Fall away slam. Dunn gets dumped. And now slowly teetering back to his feet. Looking for the gut wrench again. Pete Dunn wriggles free. Oh, there's the forearm strike. Bitter end to Cross, but Cross is right next to the ropes. Cross is right next to the ropes. Going for a second. Or a third, rather. The 
There it is. Bitter end to Karrion Cross. One. Two. We've got a new champion. The distraction from Scarlet Bordeaux was not enough. The Bruiserweight has picked up another championship reign. The NWA USA Championship. I'm assuming now belongs to the Empire.